My family and I live in what you would say is a nice neighborhood. It's on the outside of the city limits and the houses are now right on top of each other. But you could walk to the neighbors within three minutes or so. Therefore, it's not really the type of neighborhood where many scary, weird things happen. Although the only time I've ever really been freaked out over something that happened while living in this neighborhood happened in early summer, while both of my parents were at work, while I and my brother were at home. I was around 16 at the time, so we were easily able to take care of ourselves. It was really starting to get warm outside and inside the house, as we live in the south, so I then opened our sunroom door. I left the screen door shut, but I opened the main door to let in some air from outside. After doing so, I lay down on the sofa, and I ended up dozing off. I was awoken by the sound of the screen door handle, and what sounded like knocking. It jolted me out of my sleep, and to my surprise, two men were standing in the doorway. One was knocking on the wooden part of the screen door, and the other was turning the handle, as if he was just going to come right into our house. I leaped off the couch and quickly went to the door, asking them what they needed. One of the two men stated that their car was right down the street, and that their battery had died, and they needed to be jumped off. Now at 16, I wasn't really thinking that they had any malicious intentions, so I told them to wait a second and I would call my dad and ask if he had any jumper cables in the garage. I closed the main door that had previously been open, and I went and got my phone off the sofa. The two men stayed in the same position and watched me through the door as I called my dad. From the start of our conversation, my dad was really weirded out once I told him what happened, and then he told me he had the jumper cables with him in his truck at work, and that I just needed to tell the guys to try somewhere else. After getting off the phone with my dad, I went back to the door and told the men I didn't have any. I apologized for being unable to help and I shut the door back. I watched them as they walked past the bushes lined up in our driveway. I stood in shock. My pulse quickened as they got into an old silver sedan and then drove out of our neighborhood very swiftly. The abruptness of their departure left me trembling with fear the pieces of the puzzle slowly falling into place. I immediately started freaking out, as they had literally just told me that their battery died and they needed to be jumped off. I called my dad back and explained to him that the men just got into a car that was supposedly dead and how they sped off. He told me to lock the doors and call 911 if anyone else came back to the house. Thankfully, no one returned, and nothing like that ever happened again. I can't even begin to imagine what would have been in store for me if there had been any jumper cables in my house. I lived alone in a small house in Upper Wisconsin. It's in a small community with a couple of dozen houses in the area, but it's a few miles away from town. I've been living in that same house for about four years. For the most part, I hadn't had any issues. I like not being in a busy area and just having trees surrounding the community. I worked a normal 9-to-5 job though, which meant driving into town most days and getting home around 6 o'clock. I woke up one morning at my usual time to get ready for work. I got dressed, made a bowl of cereal, then I drove into town. At 5 o'clock, I started to drive back home. The sun was setting and by the time I pulled into my driveway, it was dark out. I headed inside and dropped off my bag on the kitchen chair, then started searching through the pantry for something to eat for dinner. As I looked through the shelves, though, I noticed something odd. The box of cereal I had for breakfast wasn't where I remember to have put it. Actually, it wasn't anywhere at all. I looked around the kitchen for a minute just really confused and thinking that I was losing my mind. I got frustrated after a bit and gave up making a quick dinner and tried to enjoy the rest of the night. At 10 o'clock my eyes were getting really heavy so I turned off the TV and stumbled into the kitchen to fill up my water bottle before bed. I went to the back to turn off the porch lights, but just before I switched them off, I saw something far back at the edge of the yard. 
a figure standing among the trees just past the reach of the lights. I had no way to get a closer look, so I just stood there, looking at them for a few seconds until I saw them walk away deeper into the forest. It was really strange and gave me chills, but I wasn't surely exactly what even happened. I was more confused than anything. I switched off the lights and went to bed. In the morning, I got ready to work again and went downstairs. But when I opened the pantry, the box of cereal was there. The one that I thought I had been missing, it was sitting right where I'd left it. Figured I just missed it somehow and quickly ate and went to work. All day though, I sat at my desk thinking about it. The more I thought of it, the more I was sure it was not there yesterday. Then the figure by my house came to mind and only got me more freaked out. It was Friday though, so I had the weekend to relax and collect myself. At four o'clock, my boss let the staff go home early which was a big relief for me because I couldn't focus anyways. I drove home getting there just before five. As soon as I stepped through the door, something was off. I don't know what, but I could just feel it. I walked into the kitchen and everything seemed to be in place. Then I heard a sound, like a heap of books being dropped. I froze. It came from the living room. Hello? I called out. It was quiet again. I stepped slowly to the entryway of the living room and scanned the room. I took a few more steps in and walked carefully through, checking behind everything. There was nothing and no one. I went back by the front door preparing to check upstairs when I heard sudden footsteps shuffling through the kitchen. I turned my head and looked down the hallway. A man was standing at the far end, looking at me. It was like my brain and body just shut down for a second as we stared at each other. I spun around and swung open the front door. I heard his footsteps coming up behind me as I sprinted out of the house and ran all the way to my neighbor's house. They called the police for me and let me stay with them until they arrived. The man, of course, was gone by then, but they found one of the window hinges to be broken allowing access to the home, even when locked. They also found some disturbing evidence that the man had likely been spending hours inside my house, eating my food and everything. There was no way to tell how long it had been going on. After that, I put my house up for sale and stayed with some relatives until I was able to move. I don't know if that man was harmful or if he was just living in my house because he could but I could never shake the sight of him standing at the end of my hallway, staring at me with those dead eyes. The year was 2002. I must have been around 11 to 12 years old at the time, and I lived in a house with my two younger sisters, my nan and my mother. And that's when my nan moved in with us, as she did need some caring. Unfortunately, I never got to meet my father, so it meant our family was rather stressed out and dysfunctional with not really having a father figure. My nan would have these meetings at the hospital where she would have to get all her health checkups done, including her blood pressure, heart rate, etc. She would usually get the taxi to the hospital. It was around a 10 minute drive down the road. However, this one particular Friday night, they couldn't seem to get a taxi. My mom was stressed, pacing around the house on the phone to the taxi company, who would never pick up the phone. Back then, we didn't have Uber or anything like that, so my mom had no other choice but to leave me at home all alone and take my nan to the hospital herself. My younger sisters were at their friend's house for a sleepover, as it was a Friday night. So this left me all by myself. I have never been left home alone. It kind of excited me, the thought of just having the house to myself. But I could tell my mom was extremely worried about this. Although my nan's checkups never took more than about 15 to 20 minutes, plus 10 minutes there and 10 minutes back, so we were looking at about 40 minutes, she was still extremely worried. The area we live in wasn't exactly amazing for safety, but it wasn't a dodgy area either. My mother went around, locked every door, and shut every window in the house. 
She told me to sit and stay watching the television until she got back, which I did. So there I was sitting on the couch as I heard the car engine start and they reversed out of the driveway and drove off. I do not recall how long I had been watching TV, but I just remember getting bored. Fast forward around 40 to 45 minutes, I decided to sleep on the couch. As I fell asleep, I was awoken by a knocking noise on our back door. My mom had told me before she left to never answer the door to anyone, so I didn't. I ignored the knocking and sat there on the couch. I got extremely worried though and my mind started to race all over the place. Even though I was 11, I had good logic and my logical thinking started to kick in. Why on earth is someone knocking on our back door? They weren't at the front door. They were at the back door. This is what I don't understand. In this situation, I realized I had two choices. I either answer the door or ignore it. Either way, I don't know if this person was going to continue knocking or leave. So what ends up happening is they continue knocking. Now I was really, really starting to get scared. The next thing I realized, these people were trying to open the door. Now the door was locked but they were still trying to twist the doorknob violently. I could hear it all the way from where I sat in the living room. My mom had actually closed all the curtains and the blinds too, so basically no one could see in or out of the house. As the knob of the door was frantically moving, I could hear it being tried to be forced open. The knocking continued. However, things got really out of control when whoever was trying to open the back door and get our attention started banging on all the windows. Now I never remember hearing any calling. Nobody shouting my mom's name, my nan's name, my name, or my two younger sisters' names. My two younger sisters were both at a sleepover, and my nan and mom were still probably right in the middle of the hospital appointment or checkup, or they were either on their way back, which would still be 10 to 15 minutes, so I really don't know what to do. I can either hide in the house and completely ignore it, or take a look. Now, being 11 years old, my curiosity got the better of me. Whoever was trying to get my attention didn't seem to understand they could have just gone to the front door. This set alarm bells off in my mind, thinking that it was someone trying to break in the house or check if somebody was in. So, me being a bit, well, out there, I decided to grab a knife from the kitchen. I stood there with a 9-inch knife, about to open the door and unlock it. I couldn't quite believe what I was doing. A part of me felt like I could have died right then and there, and that someone was going to storm past me and possibly kidnap me or steal everything from the house. There wasn't much to steal considering my family was a struggling family. So I thought this was it. I grabbed a knife and opened the door, but I made sure to keep the knife on the right side where it was covered by the door as it always swung to the right. As I opened the door, the dim light revealed the familiar faces of my two younger sisters, innocent and not aware of the turmoil that had just consumed me. Confusion mingled with relief, tears streaming down my face like rivulets of sorrow. My voice quivered as I called out to them, my tone a mixture of relief and frustration. What on earth are you doing? You scared the life out of me. I yelled out to them. This whole time, it was my younger sisters who had been dropped off. Apparently, their friend couldn't do the sleepover anymore. So their mom decided to drop them off and just not even check if anyone was home. They realized that the front door was locked, so they went around the back and they thought that everyone had left. I will remember this day till the day I die. That really was the first time in my life that I had felt pure fear.